Hi, welcome to Gary's Hobby Studio. In this video, I'm going to go over a Kickstarter that I just did. That was from Scale75. It's their Minipedia. Uh, it's a bunch of books that gives you painting techniques and um, well, various different types with like airbrush, uh, paintbrush, stuff like that. So uh, I also want to say I'd like to thank all of the people that are both in, retired, and the ones who gave their lives for this country to be the way it is, um, you know, with the freedoms that we have and everything else. Uh, I know Memorial Day has already passed. This video is made after that, but I hope everybody enjoyed the, the Memorial Day weekend and also, like I said, uh, spent time with family, friends, loved ones who served uh, visited their obvious graves if they've passed away. So uh, for that there, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so just give me a second here. I'm not really ready to really do all this because I'm still putting stuff away. Okay, so I opened the box up when I got it just to make sure nothing was damaged or missing or anything of the kind. So, in the box, here is the Minipedia and a bunch of stuff from the actual Kickstarter. Um, and as you can see here, flip it around so that it looks right on camera, uh, you have Plinths and settings, sceneries, freehand FX. Sorry, I can't read things upside down. Uh, Non-metallic metallic metal, metals, leather, fabric, skin, airbrush, paintbrush. So you're getting a bunch of different books with a good bit, bit of information. I did ask them uh, because of the fact they did have books on painting before. And I asked him, is it going to be the same as what's already in the books? Because uh, there was a review of one of the uh, books of theirs. I can't think of which one it was. And all it was was pretty much the little guides that if you buy, if you don't buy their paints in their giant, you know, hey, here's everything in this series in one box. If you buy them in individual sets, you get these um, little cards because uh, I have quite a few of them because I've bought some of the stuff in sets and. Pretty much, and I even saw from the book, it's what it looks like. It looked like they just took those cards and stuck them in a book and charged money for them. Uh, they said, no, this is this is definitely going to be different, which I, I hope it is because I, I paid a lot of money for it. Because uh, like I said, I don't have a problem if, even if some of the information's recycled, I just don't want it to be completely recycled. I'd like to have fresh perspectives. I don't have a problem paying for knowledge. I would like to make sure I'm getting the actual knowledge that I'm supposed to be getting. So, taking off the shrink wrap for the very first time. And the nice thing about it is they hit a stretch goal so that you got this holder to keep them all in, which is nice. So, You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books, which is nice. Um, let's go ahead and pull out the one for the. So, preparing miniature and paintbrush techniques, which, like I said, it, I mean, I don't have a problem if, uh, like I said, as long as it's worthwhile. And I know everything's kind of mirrored. I didn't flip the thing the right way. Uh, but it has here uh, materials, preparation, holding a figure, priming, zenithal highlighting scheme. Color theory's good. I definitely need to brush up on that because I haven't had color theory since I was in high school and I'm an old man. Uh, types of paint brushes, palette types, qualities of acrylic paint paintbrush techniques level up and I mean it covers over that I'm not going to go through the whole thing but I'm going to go through a few pages of it because uh, I already did some of the, the preparing of this in one of my other videos I'll link it up in the description above or in the corner above on the, in the video it's probably going to be over there but 
uh, but it covers like the the exacto knives the sanding files uh, sanding kind of like emery boards but they're soft uh, you know some of the tools now I don't know why you would need a, a, a pair of pliers like this because that's for like turning nuts I mean unless it's for a diorama and you're building it and, and stuff like that yeah I can definitely see the needle nose pliers and I can definitely see the nippers those uh, I mean if somebody knows more than me hey please let me know why you would need that because I have yet to ever use anything like that unless I'm fixing a piece of machinery but again that's me. I may not be doing the same thing as somebody else that would need to use those. I just find it a little strange. Uh, pin vices, which you would definitely need those. Again, nippers. Uh, uh, micro tweezers, definitely. That would help with the basing materials like um, the tufts of grass and stuff like that, placing rocks. You're definitely going to need different types of glues. Um, picks to help push putty into places to seal it up there's also some other tools for that different putties I have this I don't have theirs I have a um, the moldable green stuff um, got it off of Amazon it's the green and or the yellow and or yellowish and blue and you mix it together then it talks about the preparation you got to remove the mold lines yeah, shows that with an with a exacto knife, sanding stick, sanding file. I don't know if those those are plastic or resin. These I want to say are metal because it has a kind of shine to it. And I do actually have some metal miniatures from Reaper that I've got from a couple of their um, um, events online I ordered the swag boxes and it comes with them but it shows here that how you put the uh, putty in there to help seal the joints to make it look nice how to put glue on so yeah I mean you know this is gonna be pretty decent uh, reading material for me um, maybe not so much but I mean I, I'll, I'll still read this even though I probably know most of it in here because I've been doing this since 2015 since Imperial Assault thank you certain person got me hooked on this <laughs> you know I think drugs would be cheaper than doing the hobbies that I have um, yeah it talks about priming Xenophil highlighting Obviously, they're going to advertise their own. I mean, you can pick your own. You can use theirs. You can use whatever works for you. Talks about color theory in this section. Which, this is where I've always had a problem with color theory. And I know the primaries are red, blue, and yellow. Because the primaries in a television, when I used to fix TVs, is red, blue, green. And it makes white. But in... Uh, paint it's a different combination that does that so I'm, I'm glad it's going to go over that because I've tried to look it up and like nobody could explain it in any kind of video or any kind of whatever you know whatever I found whether it be a blog or whatever nobody could actually explain it so I'm kind of hoping that this book will actually help me with that and it talks about highlight colors complementary colors types of brushes uh, obviously again they're gonna sell theirs um, not sure because I know I got a couple of brushes um, from my paint kit and I'm trying to think is that out here so I was curious I was curious if it, I don't think it's out here I think it's in my closet and I'm not gonna waste time because it shows here in the book scale color Kalinsky and then it shows scale color synthetic, but the two brushes that I got, they never really said what they were. It has some weird name. And it doesn't say syn synthetic and doesn't say Kalinsky, because if it's Kalinsky, that's fine. Except for the fact is the, the, the tips were and br bristles were just doing some weird stuff when I did a painting uh, thing. I think I did um, make a video on that. Um, which if they're not, which I don't think that they, the ones that I got are, are Kalinsky Sable, like actual, like actual hair from the, uh, from a weasel, from a member of the weasel family, 
which basically what you need for acrylics or else otherwise your bristles will just curl backwards on itself and split and it drove me nuts i was about ready to throw my games out i was about to throw my brushes and paints out and everything because the synthetics were just getting on my nerves believe me my wife can attest to this uh, but yeah it goes over the types of different types of brushes obviously which is nice because like i said I, I need stuff like this um palettes i'm pretty used to uh just kick started the uh wet palette 2 from Redgrass Games. So I have their first one. Can't wait to get the second one because the second one, it, the second one's because uh, I got the same size studio, uh, but their hydration sheets are supposed to be reusable. So I'm kind of hoping, and I know they said that the stuff from version one is compatible with version two because uh, I want to burn through the version one stuff first before I start using the version two. And the nice thing is I'll have two palettes to do that. So this way, if I want to work with like just the acrylics here or maybe some like metallics or something i can keep everything separate or you know keep all them the acrylics here and like the washes if i want to thin them out a little more i could always put them in the other palette so you know it's pretty you know it, i can't wait to get that and i'll go over that once i get it uh but then it talks about like how to use it which is again you know the qualities of the acrylic paint um, if you, I mean, you can do miniatures. I have done them with the store-bought, like, Walmart, uh, acrylics that are, like, 50, 60 cents for a two-ounce bottle. Uh, they will work. Um, you really have to thin them down to get them to lay in any kind of way, and you're going to do multiple thin coats as best you can. The paints are also a little, th uh, like, the, the, um... Uh, pigments are a little thicker than the stuff in the metallics that kind of stuff's good if you're going to do terrain or something like that um like i said i did do a couple with uh with the acrylics i did my wife's monkey lab uh figures because they were much larger than the standard imperial assault so and they didn't turn out bad and they really didn't and and that's surprising but again if i was trying to do miniatures with it uh, i i think i did try and it just doesn't work same way with the artist acrylics i bought some of uh those from like michael's they're okay i did my uh hk's uh from imperial assault with the oxide brown or something like that it's, it, it's a brown color um it was okay. I uh, wished I would have done it with actual, like, Vallejo acryl uh, acrylic miniature paints. But here's some of theirs. Like, I have their, I have uh, Scale 75 Scale Color Collection. I have some of their uh, Metal and Alchemy ones. I think I'm still missing two. Uh, definitely have their inks, both sets, one and two. I got their Artist Acrylics. And I think some of the... Fantasy and games. I think I need to finish that up. I think I need these. I was going to kickstart this, but I chose uh, for their Insta Colors. It's kind of like their version of Citadel's um, contrast paints. Sorry. Um, if, if you see me bending my hand down, it's because I can't remember and I have to think. Um, it's similar to their contrast paints. I would use these in, in my, it's just my skill level and everything. Um, these I saw as they were using them in some of the little demo videos on the Kickstarter. I would use these as for like weathering and stuff like that. I wouldn't say these are like the contrast paints where you just slap it on and it goes into the recesses and kind of highlight stuff. I want to say these are more along the lines of like weathering paints, weathering pigments, stuff like that. So for me, you know, that's the way it, that's the way I would do it. The only reason why I didn't do it is because number one, the paints were expensive to begin with, and then tack on to the the heavy shipping charge because it's like fifty euros now to ship from Spain to the U.S. I didn't realize why it was so expensive. And I wonder if it had to do with the other shipping because it would take a month 
when I got the shipping on this, it showed up in like a week because it came FedEx. It actually was shipped FedEx. So the way I'm looking at it is, is that it now that I know that's how they're going to ship it, is it still expensive? Yes. Do I, I, I have to really justify the expense to spend that. Because like I said, I, I had to pay the $50 charge for these books. And I mean, it's really, I mean, I didn't even get anything extra because they were offering like these figures that would go along with these books and some other stuff and you could get discount on their paints. And believe me, I buy paints, trust me. I I just couldn't justify the expense of of anything extra over this uh, just because of that shipping charge but like I said now that it's and I don't believe it costs 50 euros but then again I don't pay attention to a lot of that stuff I just go okay I'm I want to buy this because I have the money I want it and there it is uh, so that's that and then it's just showing like the different places to put some of the the paints and, and like I said I mean it may help me get them later down the road I know I missed out on the Kickstarter and I'm sure they'll have a discount where it's like 15% off during this time or 10% off and like I said I may buy them I may not it talks about the artist colors which I have those I haven't messed with those yet and just more of like where to place stuff and level up as more experience is gained and the fundamental steps of paint brushing or paintbrush painting with acrylics are clearly and safely mastered some of the process can be expanded to achieve better results this is not only in terms of finish but also execution times a clear example is painting over fresh paint quality of the paint or the sorry the quality in the paint of a figure is not only in the correct application of colors and their gradients it is also in the small details how to imitate the, imitate the fabric or texture of a fabric leather metal dirt effects dry mud wet mud blood wounds beard or hair on the skin etc so I mean, I've seen it. I've done some techniques from Sir Astro's painting. So hopefully this will make it better for him, you know, help me get better. I mean, this can only teach me so much and then I have to apply it, figure it out and get better at it. So, but yeah, it's showing like skin and their acrylic retarder, which I have that. It came with the uh, artist paints. Wish they made a bigger jar of that, man. They made like a 250 milliliter jar of their acrylic uh, thinner, but they don't for their retarder, which I I, I guess you're not going to use as much retarder because if you put too much in it, then the shit will never dry or it'll take a very long time to dry. Talks about cleaning the brushes. Here's a color chart. Nice. So, I don't know why for me to cut. Uh, I guess I could cut these out. If I cut them out, I'm going to laminate them. And then I don't have to worry about them ever breaking. But, uh, yeah, and I mean, you know, you could have got just one of these. And you could pick whichever one you wanted or you can get a certain set. I decided to go with all of them because, believe me, I need help everywhere. But there's the that one. Just go through a couple of pages of each, and I'm not going to go through the whole book like I did the other one. But it shows like the airbrushes and compressors. I actually had one. I had the Harbor Freight one. It was a piece of shit. Stay away from it. Uh, this is another one, similar one to uh, another one that Harbor Freight sells. It's, it's like twenty bucks or something like that. It's ten dollars more than this. This one I still have, and it still works. Um, then it shows like this is similar to uh, some of the other airbrushes I got from Iwata and Badger. Uh, these are the ones that you would want because this way, you, the this one here, in my opinion, is fine if you're doing 
uh, like shirt painting or something where you need to change colors real quick where you can take the cup off put the new one on you don't have to pour the old paint out rinse it out and then dr put drops of new in okay where you need to do it fast this is this would be the best one when you're doing miniatures or stuff that you're going to be painting you know maybe like long strokes on like you know fine details on a car whether it be a model or an actual car uh, this would be the better one to use uh, I would recommend more the airbrush with a tank so it fills up the tank because that way it gives the motor time to cool it's not pumping you know air in because it'll suck you know the moisture in because uh, I have the um, <sighs> cobalt uh, one that's like four gallons works great it's quiet I can have it in here running I mean I can talk and I only have to type talk slightly over it so that there this one here it has no tank even though you think it looks like that that's like the motor to drive the pump and it pulses in my opinion because uh, I've seen that happen on a video or something where the guy's running it and it's and I can see it pulse even though people say it doesn't happen the other thing is is that if you if you if you're airbrushing for a long period of time this motor is going to heat up and then eventually it's going to start putting water into your airline for acrylics that's not bad so if you kind of don't thin them out enough that little extra water will help the problem is if you have them at the right consistency when this starts dumping moisture into the line that's now going to add extra water so it's now your paint's not going to be that controllable and also if you do enamels that's definitely not what you want uh, but yeah, and then it says supplemental materials for paintbrush, which is like using paper and tape and stuff to tape it up, and the different thinners. It shows the airbrush cleaner. This is the thinner. This is the this is the 250 milliliter uh, one from them. But yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's the airbrush. Here's the one for skin, which I have a bad time with that. Painting skin, eyes, and hair, thank God. But, you know, it, and it shows you pictures of some of their stuff that you can buy if you want to try it out. Uh, I've got enough stuff, I'm not worried about it. it. Talks about acrylic retarder again. The different skin tones that they sell. But, yeah. Next one is fabrics. See, so like being able to paint these checkerboard squares. I couldn't do that to save my life. And I really couldn't. It shows like this diorama set that you can buy. Painting a white cloth with a paintbrush. Again, the different types of paint that you can use for certain types of clothing. I mean, obviously, you know, you, you'd be using other colors for different stuff. Here's their war fronts for this kind of stuff. Try not to make this too long. Leather, same thing. Here's like a good... Uh, thing about the for painting different areas of stuff for leather for wear it says 13 through 15 use a mixture of SC 29 walnut plus SC 05 Arctic blue to make multiple marks and cuts on the outer edge of the strap thus accenting the effects of wear which, like I said, I mean, you know, it'll definitely help. Um, metals. Now, this is actually just using the actual metallic metal um, paints. 
from their Metal and Alchemy series, which is actual like metallic paint, as you can see the shine on this here. Now I, I have done some non-metallic metals uh, through one video, Sir Astros, and from a distance it doesn't look bad. The rest of it looks like crap because I got I got to strip it and redo it. Um, but yeah, it shows like how to to put it on this type of stuff and. Because it says here, dry and wash paintbrush technique. So, you know, like I said, hopefully it'll, it will help me get better when I do other types of things. Um, I know some of this, this will help some with one of my wife's uh, Zombicide Green Horde figures. I can't think of her name. She looks like she's a nun, but I can't think of it right off the top of my head. And I'm not even going to try to stop and do it. But she has like similar style, like leg armor, similar to this. And so that would actually be pretty cool for her. And again, the thinner and the airbrush. That's the metals. Now here's the non-metallic metals. I like the different paints that you would need to create that effect and shows like how on this piece right here and to be honest with you if you I mean I don't know how well let me see if I can get it close enough but if you could see that gold chain around uh, the neck in this picture right here I mean, that looks like it's metallic. Um, and it really does. It really does look like it's metallic. But, or, you know, it looks like gold, but it's not. It's just a bunch of paint painted that way. So, yeah, like I said, I mean, I have no problems. Because, like, I mean, some figures are, if you do do them, you know, you'll be like, yeah, I'd rather use metallic than the non-metallic metal. Some people prefer the non-metallic, some people prefer the metallics, it just depends. Uh, free hands and special effects, which I'm sure this is gonna, you know, like, see, like, even this here shows, like, how to do, like, fire, and I've seen a few videos on it. And then there's the blue. That'll be a good thing to try out. And sceneries. Yeah, and this is this is basically what the little minis um, tweezers from the first one would do. Allow you to take the tufts and place them and stuff like that and push down on them. And this way you could put them like close to their legs and, and stuff like that. Which I have a few pieces from Noctura models, so this is going to come in handy with that. I need to get bases for this kind of stuff. Nice being able to do this kind of effects on a cement wall. That'll come in good for Marvel Crisis Protocol game. Okay. And this one's Plenus and Settings, so I won't kind of have a feeling it has to deal with the bases. Yeah, yeah, preparation of a figure for exhibition or competitions, yeah. Beginner, standard, master, this type of stuff. Yeah, I know I need to get some because I got a few busts um, that I'd like to put those busts on. Yeah. That's what they're called. Plenus, so I'll have to look those up. I know I found a place and I need to compare pricing and I know I need to pick up a couple. I got to see how many and stuff like that. But that is what the Minipedia was. Uh, some of the little extra doodads that uh, came with it by hitting certain stretch goals and stuff like that. Which to me, eh. I mean, one, one I like, the others are like, why? Why, why did you bother? Um, got a couple of bookmarks. Uh, three of them to be exact. So, yeah, I can bookmark a page in the in whichever one I'm reading. 
Um, they gave, or we got a book stand. As soon as I can, my dumb ass can put it together. And then this way, if I'm reading it, say I was reading this one, and I had it open to this page, as soon as I can get it to where it's supposed to. There we go. I don't know how well I'm going to use this because it's really not angled. It should have been kind of angled back, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely not going to use it. I'll have to get something else to be able to hold these open so that I can use them while I'm working. Um, but it, it, it's not bad. I, it's not as functional as they made it look out to be. I uh, got a couple of Minipedia stickers. And I also have this Minipedia... It's like a mini color theory, you know, quick guide to learn with examples, the world of color. And it's also a ruler, too. Um, and also some guides here where it has, like, red and yellow make orange. Orange and white make flesh. Red and green make brown. Which, that's not too bad really because I don't know how to mix colors but at least with this I got an idea now I might laminate this because I have a laminator I might laminate some of this stuff and uh, that'll help preserve it uh, where I'm gonna put these stickers I have not the foggiest idea um, so there's that uh, but that's pretty much all I got with this uh, I, like I said I wasn't fortunate enough just because of the expense, because like I said, I, I didn't know that the shipping was going to be through FedEx. I just figured they would get it to wherever, and then it would come through snail mail, which my post office is sucky as all get out. Uh, <laughs> and it really is. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, if... Um, I mean, just from looking at it, and like I said, if you're if you are an extremely new painter uh, and don't know much, and besides watching videos, I um, you can definitely check that out because and from from everything I've I've seen, uh, a lot of the the stuff in the the beginning book with paint brushing is definitely uh, stuff I've already covered. Um, I help people, you know, because I'll, like I said, I, I've already said I'm going to leave a link or I'll leave a card to it if you want to watch it after this. But um, this is definitely going to go up in my painting area over here. Uh, also, I have my new cabinet. It's uh, twice as wide. Or no, it's not twice as wide. Sorry. It has two doors. It's six inches wider than the current one that's behind me. It's 24 inches that one. It's 30 inches this one. Same height, same depth. Um, this is going to go over there, help to sort all my acrylic stuff for the painting hobby. That one's going to be for like all my stuff, like my camera gear, uh, the cables, and everything else I use. And then that way, you know, I, I know if I need cables, I go over there. If I need to do, you know, stuff for my painting, it's like, oh, okay, I need this. It's in here. Or, oh, hey, this new piece, I can put it in there. That's, that's what I've been waiting on because that's what's been taking a while because uh, Sam's Club did not have that in stock because that's where I bought the first one. They actually got it said it was in stock, even though it actually was shipped from the manufacturer, which I don't care. Uh, surprise, it came as, as quickly as it did, because I did uh, it did come in, thank God, before we went away to uh, Cedar Point over the Memorial Day weekend. Um, we drove up, stayed up there for a couple of days, and I don't now I don't have any pictures to. Well, if you just, I can cut out a lot of the dead time or leave it in either way. And I will show you 
one of our pictures as soon as I download it. So, there we are. <laughs> that is my wife. Yes, she has not run yet. I'm surprised she hasn't, but she hasn't. She's still with me. Uh, definitely had a good time. Definitely better time this year than last year because it just sucked. I spent more time in line trying to get stupid pass cards to go ride the rides I want to ride than I did, and I, then I had to stand in even longer lines to get in those. It was just a total shit show and a half. I'm glad they're not doing the access passes for the rides this year because that would have just sucked. Uh, but there you go. Now you've seen. We had fun over the weekend. Uh, so, anyways. Uh, that's the Minipedia. I'll leave a link. Mm -hmm. And I will probably film myself putting this thing together at some point in time. Don't know when. Could be right after I get off, off and get, finish up this. Uh, but as I always like to say, guys, hey, have a good day. Take care. Stay safe. And see you next time.